Hello, sportsmen. Now, here we are, midwinter. You can hardly tell it. Feels like March outdoors. It's a good time to plan for spring and summer. In the next half hour, I'm going to take you on a combination hunting and fishing trip. It's bow fishing for a creature that you probably don't realize is in Michigan lakes and rivers. It's called a gar. It's an eating machine when it comes to scarfing up small fish. You stay tuned for a bow fishing adventure. I'm Fred Trost, and you're watching The Practical Sportsman. Pat Witherall is backing his customized John boat down the ramp at Wabasis Lake in Kent County. There we go. He's free. Dave Coster is Pat's fishing buddy who gets the boat set up for our bow fishing adventure. Now this kind of fishing is best done at night under spotlights. Wabasis Lake has a pretty good ramp, all concrete, a big help in launching and loading a boat. Now, Pat Witherell won't bow fish much tonight himself. He'll tend the electric motor and the spotlight for Dave and I. Besides being quiet, electric motors are great for maneuvering around slowly in shallow water, and that's how we'll be stalking the fish. I suppose some bow fishermen have fancy equipment, but Pat and Dave use old bows with reels of line that tie to the heavy fiberglass arrows. The tips of the arrows have collapsible barbs so you can get the arrows out of the fish. This kind of fishing is actually more like hunting because you spot the fish with a spotlight, pull the boat alongside it as close as you can, and try to make an accurate shot. There are only a few species of fish that are legal to take with a bow during the spring season. One is a bowfin, commonly called a dogfish. That's what's hiding in the weeds here. Sometimes fish scoot off in the dark, but very often, especially with dogfish, they seem to bury their heads in the weeds, and maybe they think they're hiding. The black spot on the fish's tail is a giveaway that it's a dogfish. You'll be able to see the spot if you look carefully. Dogfish aren't popular because they eat a lot of game fish, and dogfish are not particularly good to eat, according to many people. This is one of the first fish we saw that evening. Just a little to shoot? Yeah. Unless you want to practice. It's amazing what you can see at night in a weedy lake. Wabasis is extremely okay, weedy. Up my now that doesn't make it, it very good for swimming and boating, but it yeah, grows yeah. a lot of fish and holds a lot of snapping turtles. Now this big snapper swam ahead of us for quite a distance. It's not legal to take turtles with a bow, only by trapping or grabbing by hand. Besides turtles and fish, you can see a lot of insects at night, too. The next bow fin I saw, I decided to draw an arrow on for my first shot. So I shoot low, right? Yeah. Deeper than you think there. Way too high. Way too high. <laughs> I shot so low. <laughs> Gee, this is a challenge. What makes bow fishing such a challenge is the refraction of the images through the water. Now look how the arrow appears to change direction when it hits the water. The arrow doesn't change, our vision changes through the water. We miss and the fish scoots off. Way too high. I was waiting for you to say, whoa, good shot. <laughs> what appears to be a good shot from above the water can miss the mark totally. Just look at the weeds under the surface, and they're not all that deep. They appear to shimmer and move, but they're not moving at all. The water is. Pat has a gar in the spotlight, but look how its body appears to wiggle. That's tricks played on our eyes by the water. That gar is actually holding steady, and I have to guess where it actually is. I got it. He's off and running. We don't want to get him in the electric motor, do we? He's already around, <laughs> Good shot. Yeah. Well, I just needed a couple practice shots. That's all. Well, up until now, I've been hunting with the bow. Now comes the fishing part, pulling the gar back to the boat, hand over hand. Now, fish are cold-blooded critters, and their nervous systems are not highly developed. They don't feel what we feel. Strange looking thing. Oh boy, is it Man. tough scales. Oh, they're tough. Wow. Watch that mouth. What will it yeah, do with that mouth? Yeah. Oh, 
just got to roll, roll. Pinch his head there a little bit, and he'll open his mouth. And you can't really open. Jeez, old Pete. <laughs> well, I tell you, <laughs> I tell you, I'm glad I was sitting down. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see. As I recall, I was trying to look at the teeth. <laughs> well, I'll catch this one again. They're tough when they take off. Whoa. Hard to hold see, on to. See, now, what do we do? I have renewed respect here. What are we going to do with this? Throw them in this bone can. Throw them in the bone can, but we've got to get the arrow out. Yeah, well, you'll have to re thread it. Mm -hmm. what we're have to do. Well, if he does his little flip thing again. Oh, no. Huh? <laughs> re thread the arrow. Yeah, the Pulling the arrow, arrow back, back through the, the fish way. isn't difficult, but the gar's teeth were a concern. All right. Hold that up, Mary. Here he is. <laughs> Here he is. Head down first. Head down first? Yeah. Yeah, but I like this. I like this face. <laughs> but you think it should go the other way? Boy, I'd sure like to open his mouth, but I don't dare, do I? Push on the side of his head there. Right. Wait. I'll push on the side of his head. He might open his mouth. Eyeballs there a little bit. Hold him off. Yeah. Kind of pops his. Will he open his mouth? How close do I get to? Well, I guess we'll we'll have to look at his mouth another time, and we'll cut a shot in showing you what his mouth looks like another time, when it's a little safer. Now, here's the mouth of a mounted gar that's on the wall at the Practical Sportsman Museum. The teeth are like needles, and they line the mouth on the top and the bottom from the tip of the nose to the throat. Okay, I'm going to put him in head first. That is the gar pike, and they are slimy. <laughs> I'm going to wash my hands, and we'll get back to work. Mm. I was thinking you had to clean my boat too far. I think you're the man. You're the man, Dave. Go for it, Dave. You're the man. Go for it, Dave. Come on, Dave. Go Don't disappoint Dave. us, Dave. You get up that one now. Being a shooter, cut bait. Take him, Dave. Take him. Lower. Right over him. Boy, am I glad to say that. Right <laughs> over him. Way too high, Dave. <laughs> too high. Motor dragging again. There you go, Dave. That's your shot. Oh, take the shot, Dave. Come on, he's only oh, 10 he's... feet down. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Got him, didn't you? I think so. Yeah, I did. You did? <laughs> sure did. See, Dave? <laughs> Nothing to it, guys. Ten huh? foot down. Good man. Bring him in here. Show, show us his teeth. Yeah, that's how you shoot him there. That is. That's a, that's a good shot. Oh, he's, he's snapping his teeth. Yeah. Dave Coster knows the ropes. He's taken lots of gars. Of course, he's missed his share, too, but everybody does. The barbs on the arrow fold back, and the arrow can be pulled back through. Then into the rendering bucket, it goes. Take them off nice and easy. Good job, Dave. Here's a dramatic example of the light refraction through the water that makes things look like they're in a different place than they really are. The gar looks like a snake, moving and bending, but it's not. We have to guess where it really is. Right over it. Go back in real quick. I tell you, that was way high. Hurry, really? Get over it, man. Yeah, well, go ahead and take it, Dave. It's a riot to cruise around the lake at night with the spotlight. The fish don't take off like you think they would. This gar was not bothered by the light or by three fishermen shooting at it. Pat uses the electric motor to stay alongside the fish. Way high. Come on, Dave. Right 
That shot was low, but the gar stayed in the light, swimming slowly as we retrieved our arrows. It's like it knew what bad shots we were on this evening. Yep, see him? Man, that went way high, Dave. I see that one. I tell you, it's amazing. Guy like me misses, it's just amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, who would have guessed? A little shiner minnow. Look at that thing. It's still alive. Or a perch. It's a perch. Look at it. He has a, he has a mouthful of weeds, too. Yeah, he really went flying after it. Yeah. Isn't that cool? This was a fresh catch by Agar. I'd like to see how he swallows it. Yeah, I wonder when he's going to eat it. Yeah, and it must be tricky, manipulating a meal with a mouth like that. But we won't get a chance to watch this one. We did get a good up-close look at this gar, though. We could even see the needle-like teeth as it held the perch. We could see the fins moving on the perch as it struggled to get away. The, the gar even had weeds in its mouth. It must have been quite a pursuit. This was an interesting night of bow fishing. Well, gars have nasty teeth, but I did not get nailed, despite the fact that I was with Pat Witherall, the same guy who introduced me to Helgramites. <laughs> we went on to two more fishing trips with Pat and his gang, and you'll see those in the next couple of months. Now, speaking of the Helgramite adventure, I got a letter from a woman in Ada, Michigan, named Julie, who says, I am writing to tell you I have a problem with you. I've never been much of a fan of your show, but my husband watches it every Thursday and Saturday. He loves your show because he says you were like an average guy, not like these boring know-it-all pros. Well, I've been told that I'm kind of a boring know-it-all average guy, but that's nice that Bob enjoys the show. Now, Julie went on to say, when that nasty-looking bug bit you, even though I'm sure it hurt, it was very humorous. But anyway, back to why I'm writing. After the show on Thursday, Bob taped it on Saturday. I swear, since then he has watched it at least a hundred times. I can't get him to do anything around the house. I admit it was good. I watched it twice myself, but enough is enough. I will be a fan of yours forever if you could find time on one of your shows to say five quick words. Bob, put the tape away. Sincerely. Having a nervous breakdown, Julie Merritt from Ada, Michigan. Okay, mission accomplished there. I think if I lost an arm to a snapping turtle or something like that, my ratings would go right through the roof. I mean, keep watching. You never know what's going to happen. Now, speaking of Helgramites, I've been taking a fly tying class on Monday nights at Grand River Bait and Tackle in Lansing. Three weeks ago, the first night, the first fly that we tied was a Helgramite imitation. Well, it's called a woolly bugger. Very famous, very popular fly. When this fly is wet in the water, it looks like a Helgramite or some other creepy crawly that fish like to eat. Now that night, I also tied this Mickey Finn. It's a streamer fly that imitates a minnow. Then we did a black ant. Now, these are little, little flies for bluegill. -like. Now, mine didn't turn out that well. It's tough to tie these small ones. The instructor, Mike Billado, felt sorry for my black ant, so he gave me this one he tied. You can see how that hackle stands out a lot better. Well, I've never tied flies before, so this is a new adventure for me that's going to make fly fishing a lot fun for me in the future, which means, of course, that I'll be putting more fly fishing on this show. See, what's fun for me is what ends up on the program. That's the way it works if you have your own TV show, just in case you were wondering. Okay, let's check out some things in the news. Now, this from the Lansing State Journal. On the 26th of January, Boy Scouts fight back. What do you think they fight? <laughs> Girl Scouts? Yes. Why, you might ask? Well, naturally, it's over money. The article says, Armed with an endless supply of cookies, Girl Scouts have long monopolized the pleading child fundraising market. Whoa, what, pray tell, could Boy Scouts sell to compete against cookies? Well, it says here that Troop 200 in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, you've got it, they've been selling elk antlers. The troop has raised 
tens of thousands of dollars, selling antlers for up to $2,000 a set. Now, you may have heard that the Ontario spring bear season has been called off. Well, that's true. And hunters are ticked off, as you may have read in the Detroit Free Press on January 21st. Now, here are some statistics on bear hunting in Ontario. The Ministry of Natural Resources estimates there are 75 to 100,000 black bears in Ontario. Hunters take about 2,500 or so each spring. In 1996, about 3,000 Ontario residents and 8,200 non-residents, many of them from Michigan, bought spring bear licenses, which generated about $8.8 .8 million for Northern Ontario's economy. Plus, the government collects about $1.3 million in license sales, primarily from the non-residents. While in 1995, it was estimated that after 2,500 bears were taken, some of which were sow bears that still had cubs with them, an estimated 270 cubs were orphaned. Now, these orphan cubs are the reason the Ontario uh, Ministry closed its season. Now, an analysis by the Ontario Federation of Hunters and Anglers showed that by not taking adult bears in the spring, most of which are males, uh, there will be a larger proportion of cubs that are eaten by male bears. See, that's right. The number one predator of bear cubs is papa bears. Well, some Michigan hunters want to protest and put the heat on the Canadian government to change their mind. Uh, trust me, it's tough enough to put heat on our own Michigan government to change its mind, uh, let alone a foreign government. That just won't cut much mustard. Last July, Matt and I took the camper to the UP for a few days. We stayed overnight at Michigami Shores Campground near Champion. That's just west of Marquette. Now, we spent some time walking around, chatting with some of the people who were camping there. Uh, their friends back home probably thought they were roughing it. Look over there, Maddie. We have the, the bathrooms with the uh, laundry facility in the middle, men and women, the showers, the whole nine yards. Very nice when you're camping. And now this lady here, she's putting out Putting out, she's not using the dryers. Oh yes, I got one going. You got one dryer going? I got one dryer going. Then why do you hang these? I don't want to shrink them. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is getting pretty picky. I know, I now, know. Now, where did you get all that firewood? We brought it from home. Oh, in the back of the pickup truck? Yep, back of two pickups. Because you don't very often see a campsite with that much firewood. They charge a premium price, the yeah, you local. Yeah, you better believe it. Local entrepreneurs right. up here. We're from Gratiot County, so there's lots of free wood down there right ah. now. So, so we brought it. And one thing i got to ask, in fact, let, let's come on underneath here, Matt. I got to, while she's telling us about this campsite, she calls it a campsite, but I think she's brought the whole house here. <laughs> yeah, come on this way. Tell me, I mean, we got uh, four bicycles. Uh, yeah, we have 10 bicycles. There's 10 of us, so we have 10 bicycles. Well, come on through this way, because do you know what I want to ask you about? No. What I'm on. most curious about <laughs> that we've noticed here the on the... The dish? <laughs> the dish. Like three channels aren't enough when you're camping? Hey, Not you nearly. <laughs> And the race was on. The race was on. They're NASCAR fans. They have oh, NASCAR dish. fans. How many channels do you get with this dish? How many does it get? Oh, it's dry. <laughs> How many channels do we get, Brian? Isn't that something? Yeah, Isn't that the way it always is? You have to ask the kids how many channels the TV gets. Oh, camping in the 90s is a far cry from the way we used to camp in pup tents. This campsite had a satellite dish, a TV set, VCR, boom box, stereo, 10 bicycles, electricity, refrigerators, stove, oven, microwave, and the people back home actually think they're roughing it. <laughs> Real rough. Where are you folks from? Well, we're from uh, Lake Ann, down by Traverse City. Oh, that's a beautiful area. So you go from Lake Ann, a beautiful area that people... So what's the deal with that? <laughs> Get away from the Jerry Festival. <laughs> I spent a week back when I was in high school camping on Lake Ann. Yeah. It's a nice place, but you, know, you live there. But you live there. Yeah. There's no electricity. There. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Well, great, folks. Nice yeah, talking with you. We'll let you yeah. eat in peace and right. go through all your channels. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time of year to do it. White Lake. Up there in Muskegon County, White Lake, we get a lot of reports from White Lake, and we've seen some big fish when we were salmon fishing. Big walleye off of the break wall come out of White Lake, but obviously it's a good lake for pike. Yeah, we had real good luck last year. We had um, out there a few days, and the fishing was good, and this year produced 
Oh, but, you, but hold it, you were fishing. Th you were fishing through the ice. Yes. Tip up. Yes. And how big is this pike? Um, you don't have 20, to look at it. Twenty-one and a half <laughs> uh, pounds and um, yeah. forty-one and a half inches long. That's an outstanding pike. How did you get it through the hole? Well, a friend of mine, Marty, uh, ended up gaffing it and pulling it up. The hole was like seven inches, so it was real hard to get up through. Hmm. But uh, he took two or three pulls on it and finally came up. Outstanding. Well, this is what comes out of White Lake. This is one huge pike. Dale Gobig? Yes. Gobig from Rothbury. Congratulations on that, Dale. Thank you. Great fish. <laughs> we videotaped Dale Gorberg last year at our Fishing Awards Banquet. This year's Fishing Banquet is on the official uncontested, proven, verified, scored, x-rayed, credible, and on display world record whitetail deer rack right here on next week's show. I'll see you then. That's all. Strange looking thing. Oh boy, is it Man. tough scales. Oh, they're tough. Wow. Watch that mouth. What will it yeah, do with that mouth? mouth? Yeah. Oh, he just, just got to roll, roll, pinch his head there a little bit and then he'll open his mouth. And you can't really open. Jeez, old Pete! <laughs> well, I tell you, <laughs> I tell you, I'm glad I was sitting down. <laughs> yeah.